Hey everyone, in this video, I want to show you how to return files from fast API endpoints. So returning files is pretty easy to do. So in addition to just showing you how to return the file, I'll talk about some things you may want to consider when you are returning files. So to start, I have a fast API app running. It has one endpoint. It returns hello world. We can see that here. And next I want to create another endpoint that will return a file. So I'll call this slash cat because I want to return a picture of a cat. So before I can do that, I need to install another library, and this is called AIO Files. The reason being is for Fast API, normally you need to use asynchronous libraries to do things. So Fast API is an asynchronous library itself. So when handling files, I need to do it asynchronously. So pip install AIO Files, and I already have it, but just make sure you install that before you try to do this. And then once you have that installed, you can import the type of response that you need. So from fastapi.responses, I want to import the file response. And that will allow me to return a file. So if I do return file response, and then I put the path of the file, so file slash cat.jpg, and then I run my server, I should be able to see the picture of the cat. So let's see. So slash cat. And there I have a picture of a cat. So that's pretty simple. And like I said, there are some other things you may want to consider. So the first is what happens if the file doesn't exist? So what if I change this to dog.jpg? So I don't have a dog.jpg, I only have cat. So my server restarted, I'll try refreshing this and I get an error. And of course that's not unexpected to get an error. But the thing that is unexpected is how you can handle this. So here I can't just have an exception block to catch this because the exception isn't being generated in this function. It's actually being generated by the thing that fast API sits on top of starlet. So I have no way of just putting a try except block here to make sure that the file exists. So I have to do that myself. So what I'll do is I'll import from OS. So import uh, OS and I'll put a path to uh, my project. So I'll just call this path and we'll say, um, I think it's home Anthony. And then this is fast API file example. Okay. And then inside of the function, I'll have another one called file path, another variable. And this one will be os.path.join and I want to join the path that I have as a global variable and then the name of the file or the location. So it'd be files and then cat.jpg and you know, I'll leave it as dog. So once I have that file path, then I can use uh, OS path again to see if it exists. So I can say if os.path.exists and pass in the file path here, I can return the file. So I'll just put file path here and if it doesn't work, then I'll return like an error message. So I can say file not found. So now it shouldn't error out if the file doesn't exist. So let's try that now. So I'll go back to cat and I see file not found here as a dictionary or a JSON response, I should say. If I go back and change this to cat, then this will succeed and it will go in here and return the file response. So if I go back, I see the cat again. Another thing to consider is the file type that you're returning. So in this particular case, I'm returning an image, a JPEG image, but you can return any kind of file that you want. And normally what happens is it looks at the extension, so .jpg, and it kind of figures out what it is. So .jpegs are obviously JPEG images. But what if instead I had like cat dot, you know, ABC. So this is my own format or just can be any other format. So like PDF, I should use a real one, maybe PDF or CSV or so many other files. I want to tell the browser what kind of file is coming. So to do that, I can have the media type. So media type equals, and then you put the type of file that it is. And to get this, you have to be familiar with MIME types. So I have the Firefox documentation here or the MDN documentation. And here it talks about MIME types, which are basically just ways of describing the type of data that is being considered. So for example, you can have video MP4 for MP4 videos. You can have text plain for plain text, text HTML for HTML. You have fonts, you can have images, 
uh, and so on. So if I change the media type, let's say to a font, right? So we know I'm dealing with an image, but what if I just change the media type to a font? Let's see what happens. So my server restarted. I'll go back to cats, I'll refresh. And now what happens is I get this uh, dialogue to open or save the file. And it says, which is font woof. So it thinks that this is a font now. It doesn't think it's an image any longer because if it thought it was an image, it would just display the image. But because it thinks it's a font, it knows you can't just display a font file in the browser. So you either have to download it or open it with some other program. So the funny thing about browsers is they sometimes do support mistakes in the MIME type. So for example, if I change this to image slash PNG, remember I have a JPEG image, it will still work. So my server just restarted, I refresh the page and it works. And the reason being is because browsers can handle mistakes like that. So if you specify the wrong type of image, it will still try to display it as an image. So it will look at it as a PNG first, realize that it doesn't work. So it will try a JPEG because that's also a common type of image. So if you wanna add the media type there to give the browser more information, you can. You can just go to the documentation for MIME types to see the different options that you have. So for example, if you have PDF files, you can do application slash PDF. But normally, Fast API can kind of infer what the type of file is from the, the extension, but you can also get away with removing the extension and then setting the MIME type and then everything will work correctly. So if you don't have an extension or you have a weird extension, then use the media type. If you have a common extension, then you probably don't need to specify the media type. And the next thing I want to talk about are attachments. So to have an attachment, you need to specify a file name. So if I say like mycat.jpg, then what happens is when I go to the page and refresh it, instead of seeing the cat in the browser, I still see it because this is just the old page, but let's just say I went to a uh, home first and then I do slash cat, we see it brings me the dialogue. It tells me that this is uh, a PNG image, which it isn't because I haven't changed the MIME type. So let me go ahead and change that to JPEG again. And then once my server restarts, I'll just try that again. So now it tells me it's a JPEG image. It tells me the size and so on. And it tells me the programs I can open it with like photos or I can just save it. So if you want to make the user download a file, then you want to specify a file name. If you want it to display in the browser, then don't specify a file name. And the only caveat to that is if it can't be displayed in the browser like a font file, then it will automatically try to download. So just keep that in mind when you're returning files. And then the last thing I want to talk about is changing the description in the documentation. So if I go to the docs here, docs, and we look at cat, we see that the media type is application slash JSON, which isn't necessarily correct. You could still leave that there. It won't affect anything. But if you want to just change the documentation, like changing the description, I'll show you that as well. So to do that, it's set in the decorator and we're specifying responses. Right, so in responses, the first thing we need to worry about is the response code. So here, 200 is what I want for success. And then I can specify a description. So description, and then I can say something like uh, a picture of a cat, right? So if I reload the server and then refresh this, we see a picture of a cat there. And if I wanna change the media type, which really won't affect anything, this is just, documentation to help the user understand what's going on and to allow them to try things directly. It really doesn't work well with files trying things out directly. So I don't necessarily think you need to change any of this, but if you want to, you can. So for example, the media type, if I want, I can add a second thing to this dictionary here for 200. I can specify the content and then that takes in a dictionary. The key of the dictionary is the MIME type, so image slash JPEG, and then that has another dictionary, and we can say example, and then for this particular one, I can say something like no example available. Just imagine a picture of a cat. All right, so now the server restarts, and I'll refresh. 
and then I'll change to image slash JPEG here. And then I see the example value that I just wrote. No example available, just imagine a picture of a cat. So that's all I wanted to talk about with returning files from FastAPI. As you can see, it's fairly straightforward. There are just some things that you may want to keep in mind when you're doing this. So I'll post a link to the code in the description below. I'll also post a link to that documentation for MIME types if you want to look at that. If you have any questions about anything I've done in this video, feel free to leave a comment down below. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel already, please subscribe. So thank you for watching and I will talk to you next time.